Do you, Lord, I'm grateful, Allah the Sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the Forgiver. For blessings I'm hopeful, Allah the Bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the Creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We have completed the first principle of faith that is توحيد and today we are starting inshallah with the second principle of faith and that is justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this subject includes many points to be discussed and it is good to know what we are going to discuss in this principle of faith we discuss first about meaning of justice of almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second one is um, the rationality of good and evil in the sense that when we say something is good and something is bad, are these things good and bad because our reason tells us that this is good and that is bad or because Sharia told us, Islam told us this is good so it is good. If we say otherwise then it will be bad. Which one of them? Uh, of course we believe that the good and bad are uh, and there is stood rationally, but then there are a lot of arguments here um, which will be discussed inshallah in detail. And the third subject is Al-Qadha wa Al-Qadr, um, generally translated as fate and destiny. Uh, but this is, may not be the exact word-to-word uh, -word meaning or understanding. Sometimes they say predetermination and divine decree. Okay, that is um, divine decree is a better word for um, qadha uh, and um, qadar is the size and limit. Again, that we will discuss it in detail. And the th fourth subject under uh, justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be discussed is al-jabr wa tafwil wa al-amr bayn al-amrain, free will or predetermination. Um, uh, or what we believe is a state between both of them. We neither believe in uh, complete free will nor we believe in predestination. Uh, again, that is one of the subjects to be discussed in detail. Uh, number five is the falsafatul uh, shurur, the philosophy of good and evil things available in life or philosophy why evil things available are this against justice of Allah or not uh, it has its own philosophy and it is not contradicting justice of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sufferings pains and hazards and all that will come under this subject that we are going to discuss inshallah and the sixth subject is the bada bada word to word translation means appearance uh, it happened that sometimes, uh, let us say the angels, or sometimes the prophet himself, they know that the things are going toward one direction. Let us say somebody will die after um, one hour, for example. And suddenly after one hour, something will happen which will change that knowledge. So it appeared a new state, you know. Uh, so how that happens, and whether it affect or contradict with the knowledge of Allah or not contradicting knowledge of Allah and what its exact meaning because there is a lot of misunderstanding about it so we need to elaborate that point in detail and the seventh subject is called husn taklif or the goodness of religious ordinances that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ordain us for something which is uh, impossible to do and whatever Allah has decreed is um, good and possible within our limitations and good for us. Uh, while the eighth subject, necessity of Allah's favor, Allah 
has to favor. We say has because out of his mercy, out of his wisdom, out of his uh, knowledge, uh, out of his might, uh, he's all merciful or uh, compassionate. Uh, so out of his uh, decision that he has to favor the human beings and to show them what is good, what is bad. You know. And the ninth subject, uh, they say the commands of Allah has a, a, a wise reason, uh, not without reason, you know. Uh, whatever Allah says to do this or not to do that, this is obligatory, that is not obligatory, or that is forbidden, these are all have its own reasons, not that it is without reason. These are some of the subjects under the uh, second principle of faith, al-adlul ilahi. Uh, we come to the, um, the first one, the justice of Allah, that we believe simply Allah is just and is not doing any sort of injustice. Uh, here, um, injustice in many, many points, you know. First of all, we need to know the uh, definition of um, justice. Uh, we say definition of justice sometimes uh, it is said is very difficult to give a um, very exact and precise definition. The scholars, the scientists who wrote um, about justice, uh, they say it is a relative thing and difficult to give. It is understood, but difficult to give an exact definition. What is justice? Uh, but we see the Islamic philosophers and uh, uh, getting uh, views from uh, Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, they have defined it very beautifully. Uh, and they say justice is giving every uh, thing his own uh, rights. Um, every thing in, in, in the world, whether material things or immaterial things, whether a human being or animals or plants or whatever, everything, if he got his own right, then that is justice. If he is not getting his right, then it is injustice. Um, if I give a practical example of a human being, uh, you see, if you give the doctor, let us say, an, a, a clinic and a conditioned room to treat the patients, that is justice, because that is his right. He has to sit comfortable and the patient to be comfortable. But if an engineer who is doing roads between cities and he is working under direct sunlight, very hot weather, you say, no, I will make him equal with the doctor, so I give him also an office. Well, that is, we say, injustice. Because if you sit in the office, then who will control the laborers who are working to make the roads in between the cities? So his place is to be outside, and the doctor place, for example, to be inside. Um, and so on. If you give the carpenter the job of farmer and give the farmer job of um, carpenter, well, there will be injustice because he said all these tools are not useful and this is not my position, this is not my specialty. Um, so that everything has to have its own rights. And generally because Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing, then he knows what is important and what is perfection for the human being and give every human being what will help him to reach the perfection. Um, that is why uh, we see that Lama Sheikh Muhammad Rada Mudaffar said, uh, he, Allah does not treat his creatures without justice, nor does he rule them unfairly or cruelly. Uh, he rewards his obedient servants and punishes those who fall into sin. He does not compel his servant to do things which are not within their capability, nor does he punish them for more than the sins they have committed. Actually here, uh, there are many points to be discussed, you know. Uh, in, well, in this article, in the book Faith of Shia Islam uh, is, is written. Uh, first, we need to know, is the Justice of Allah 
an attribute of essence of Allah or attribute of his deeds? Which one? Uh, if it is attribute of the essence, we have to deal about it with Tawheed. Actually, um, the scholars regarded uh, an attribute of his deeds, not of the essence. Of course, the essence of Allah, Allah is all-knowing, almighty, that is right. But to come here about the justice, you say, when he de deal with the people or treat the people or create the people, he create them with justice. If he um, reward them or punish them, he reward them and punish them with justice. If he asks them to do something or not to do other things, the things which are obligatory and the things which are forbidden, uh, so he, he order with justice and um, his negation is with justice, not out of his pleasure or his mood, you know, is not without a suitable and proper reason for that. So it is actually an attribute of uh, deeds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not attribute of essence. And secondly, when you come to the definition, we say giving everything uh, what is his right, what he deserves. Now here there is a point. Is there anything, anything in the world has his right to be given or no? All the right is for Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is given by Allah to things as a favor. Uh, actually, when we say everything is right, there is no right for human beings or, or uh, the, the plants or the creation, because all were created by Almighty God. He is the owner of everything he created. Uh, now, if you have a slave and owned by you, the slave, whatever he does, there is no right for him uh, in, in the sense that should be rewarded because that is his duty. He's fulfilling his duty to go and come. You know, uh, Almighty Allah, ownership is more than ownership of a person uh, for a slave or uh, for a property or for other things. He is the owner of everything. He created everything. It is in his hand. Uh, so, what do we mean by that? He will give his right. Actually, we mean though the rights are a favor of Almighty God to mankind. Uh, if somebody offer a prayer uh, that, that is not benefiting Almighty God to say, okay, I should reward you, I must reward you, and that is justice. Uh, because uh, it is his duty and that is his perfection, and he has to be obedient to his Lord, to obey the orders. But it is because Almighty God promised that he will do favor to people, and if they do good deeds, he will reward them. So we mean that justice, yes, for those who have done good deeds, Almighty God will reward them to go to paradise. Those who have done bad deeds, here either some of them, Almighty God, out of his mercy, will forgive them, or others has to be punished, you know. If all of them to be forgiven, Actually, then, meaning the Sharia and the laws and the rules and regulations are meaningless. You know, if the one who is obedient and the one who is disobedient are treated the same way, so there is no meaning for the uh, sending the messengers and the prophets and telling the people about uh, the Sharia and the rules and regulations and what is forbidden, what is not forbidden, what is obligatory, what is not. All that will be useless. If everybody to be treated equal, I mean, if you say that the speed in the street is up to 100 kilometer per hour, but still those who uh, drive the car with a speed of 100 and those who drive a car with a speed of 200 are treated the same, so then what is the point to put the speed? Uh, so there is no point here. The point, if you put then those who are following the rules and regulations, will be uh, respected, and those who contradict that then deserve uh, punishment or whatever the law is deciding about that punishment. There is a difference 
here is a nice point to be mentioned. There is a difference between the divine laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the human laws. In human law, if you obey the law of the country, nobody will reward you. Nobody will tell you you are a good man because you obey the traffic light and you cross the road or you are not contradicting the law or you are not uh, uh, um, spoiling the country, for example, and you are a good citizen. There is no reward. They say it is your duty to be a good citizen. If, but if you contradict the law, then there is a punishment. But for Almighty God, as we said, even if you obey the law, out of his favor, not out of you deserve, out of his favor, he will reward you. He gave you the power to offer the prayer. And he gave you the tawfiq, the success to do that. And still when you do that, he said, okay, I will reward you for that. He gave you the sustenance to make you rich. And he gave you the success to give charity, for example. Still, when you give the charity, though he is the real owner of your money, you and your money both are owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But still, when you do something good, he said, okay, I will reward you for that. So when you obey the law, you will be rewarded. Not that you say that is your duty and there is no reward here. They say no. That is why we say the reward of Allah is out of his favor and his generosity. He's generous and kind to the creature and said, okay, if you are a good person, I will reward you. Good means following the rules and regulations. I will not say that is your duty, though it is your duty and it is for your benefit and it is for your perfection to reach perfection in here and in the hereafter, you have to obey religious rules and regulations. But still he said for obeying the law and fulfilling your religious duties, I will reward you. So that is the reward of Almighty Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala is to understand it. We said about the meaning of justice is um, uh, to give everything his right. There is another meaning is wisdom. Wisdom actually to put everything in its position. That is to give his right and wisdom is to put everything in his position. Sometimes these two words are more or less near to each other or similar. Um, and it is possible uh, because in, in a word of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said the uh, justice and yada' al umura mawadi'aha, to put the things in their place. So their place means their right is their place or their position is their place. So wisdom and justice sometimes are um, having the similar meaning, you know. But anyhow, what we said, uh, because all the rewards are a favor of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but his wisdom, Allah's wisdom, is that the, those who have done good will be rewarded and those who have done bad will be punished. That is out of his wisdom. Otherwise, if there is no punishment in the hereafter, as uh, I said, then there is no meaning for sending the prophets and the messengers and talking and the preaching and guiding the people, then what is the benefit of that when the good and bad people have the same fate in the hereafter? Both will go to paradise. Then people say, why, why should I be good if, even if I rob the people, even if I cheat, even if I kill, even if I do all nonsense things, then I will go to paradise. So then there is no point for uh, religious ordinances. But here we said the wisdom of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, decided that he reward the good people with paradise and punish the bad doers by uh, hellfire and some of them might be forgiven and that are for more details, you know, this will be discussed in the subject of the uh, questioning in the hereafter. Why and, and what and what are conditions and what are exceptions. These are uh, another uh, detailed subjects, not here. 
Now, um, the meaning that we say the justice and wisdom here, that he will not do, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not do anything bad or wrong, and will not leave anything good for his creatures. Because uh, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is all perfection, as we said in Tawheed, all the perfection and all the beauty is for Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if he is perfect, naturally he will not do anything wrong, and he will not leave anything good that he can give it to his creatures. Actually, um, they said why somebody is doing injustice. Injustice is either somebody does not know the right from the wrong, so he do wrong things because he doesn't know. And naturally that is not applicable for Allah. Secondly, he know what is good and bad, but he is forced to do it for certain reason. Naturally Allah is not forced. Third, he knows it is bad, but he is in need of it, and he is doing the wrong thing because of need to fulfill his own desires. Naturally, that is not true for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, well, the fourth possibility, maybe he do it um, out of a pleasure, that we want, we want to joke and play without reason, you know. Uh, but naturally, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like that. So when we say the Almighty Allah is just, uh, because there is no reason for him to be unjust. Neither we say he, he doesn't know, of course he is all-knowing, nor we say that he needs, there is no need for Allah. Allah is al-ghani, is uh, all um, uh, self-subsistent and everything in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and naturally Allah uh, is not doing things on in, in pleasure uh, just for no reason that is not uh, attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as was discussed uh, so from all that we can conclude that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do anything out of justice and out of wisdom. Whatever decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because of his wisdom and what he decreed is within capability of a human being to do. He did not decree anything that the human being cannot do. He put the prayer, said the prayer five times. If you would have said the prayer 500 times a day Naturally, that is beyond capability of a human being. Uh, he said fast uh, from the morning till evening. If he say fast one month continuously, day and night, that is beyond capability of the people. Uh, and so on. Uh, you know, so all Islamic rules and regulations are within capability of the person, of the human beings to do it. Uh, not out of capability to say that um, uh, I was ordered something that I cannot do. And when he said, do not do things, you know, the things which are haram, injustice to people, cheating, lying, uh, uh, drinking, gambling, uh, killing, uh, uh, abusing others, and so on, um, all those are capable, a human being is capable to do them, I mean not to do them to uh, protect himself from doing them. He did not put some difficult rules that, okay, don't go out for your business, so naturally you, you will die of poverty uh, because unless you do business. He said, do business, but your business should be in a right way without cheating, without abusing, without uh, injustice to people, you know. He said, eat food, but eat food with condition that the food should be, the meat for example, to be halal meat and the food to be healthy, to be tahar and so on, not to be usurped and so on. So he allowed whatever a human being needs, but within capable uh, means to do them for a human being. A human being easily can practice that and do that 
without difficulty. So that is um, actually uh, um, part of justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are actually three types of justice or discussed on three levels, let us say, if we classify. One, we say al-adl takwini the cosmic justice, and that is justice in uh, creating the existence around us. And it's meaning there that justice that every um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created things, uh, he gave everything whatever he, he, it is capable to handle that, you know. He gave the sun, the moon, the earth, the sea, the wind, whatever is capable to grow and to be that was given according to the wisdom. So as he said, Almighty God will favor uh, the uh, existence to existing things. So whatever created in um, the cosmic life, whatever existing, is existing because that is his capability. Well, above capability is not possible. When you say the glass of water is capable to have a 300 milliliter of water, naturally you cannot put uh, two liters in it because its capacity is only that. So Almighty God will give everything its own capacity according to his justice and his wisdom. So the creation and the rules and regulations in creation are all depend on justice, but justice in this sense, that everything is given according to its own capability, and Almighty God will favor uh, every creature, whether a human being, whether animal, whether a plant, or the cosmic creatures, all are created with that. The second one is uh, on the level of Sharia or Islamic jurisprudence, justice in jurisprudence. And here we mean that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not for, forget to tell a human being what, what will bring him into perfection. Uh, so if prayer will lead to perfection, Almighty God will not forget to tell us that. He will tell us, offer a prayer. If fasting will bring our perfection, he will tell us. Uh, well, uh, to give religious alms, for example, to go for pilgrimage, to do uh, charity and so on, all, all what is good, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. That is his justice, because as we said, here, the meaning actually justice and wisdom. So he's favoring us to give us the religious or the divine jurisprudence. So that is the meaning justice here in jurisprudence, that Almighty Allah will not uh, forget us from that favor. Uh, re religious duties are favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Uh, some people think it is responsibility and difficult and it's a duty, I cannot do it. No, it is actually a favor for us to reach our perfection. And whatever is haram, Almighty Allah said, do not do it, it is not lawful, is actually against our perfection. It will not harm Almighty God if we are disobedient. But it's against your benefit, against your perfection. The perfection that you have to reach as much as you can in this life, and that will make you in a better and higher position in paradise in the hereafter, uh, is by fulfilling those religious duties and abstaining from whatever said as uh, haram things, uh, not allowed things. So there, here, the meaning of justice in uh, Sharia, in Jewish prudence. And the third one, they say justice in reward and punishment. Uh, so that is another level of justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we say those who have done good uh, will be rewarded in the day of judgment. And those who have done bad will be punished in the day of judgment. So there is justice. The good and bad people will not be treated equally in the day of judgment. If the 
dictators and the prophets are treated the same in the day of judgment, then that is not justice. So the prophets who, who suffered a lot and sacrificed for sake of humanity and doing good deeds, and the dictators who killed thousands of people, if they are both treated the same way, so they say that is not justice. And of course, even in our day-to-day -day life, we can't say that the criminals and the good citizens are to be treated the same. Leave the criminal, do not punish them, do not put them in jail, do not um, give them uh, whatever they deserve by the court uh, of um, uh, punishment. He said, no, okay, leave the people uh, free to do what they want. He said, no, that is not justice. He said, justice, that the good citizens to be respected and those who are bad to be uh, punished so that they will not spoil the life here. Uh, so the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when say he is just, we mean by his justice, that uh, justice in uh, reward and punishment uh, is that in the day of judgment he will reward, he promised to reward and uh, he made it incumbent for himself to reward not that we deserve as we say it, it is his favor and his uh, promise so naturally Almighty Allah will fulfill his promise uh, but then he threatened those who are doing wrong to be punished. Now it is up to him to fulfill his threat or not. Of course, some of the people, Almighty God, may not fulfill his threat. Again, that for certain reasons, not out of wisdom. Maybe because some of good deeds are removing some of their bad deeds, equalize that, and part, some of them deserve intercession. So intercession will be accepted about them, there are a lot of details, but generally um, some people at least who have done wrong will be punished by hellfire and who cannot go to paradise. So that is to say justice in reward and punishment in the uh, hereafter. Um, well, this looks clear, but uh, maybe in uh, the second uh, lecture we'll see that some of the people believes some of the schools of thought, they believe it is for Allah to do whatever he wants. If you put the prophets in hellfire and the bad people in paradise, it is justice. We say no, that is not right and that is not justice, but that has to be discussed in detail in the uh, coming lectures, inshallah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alihi al-tahireen. Allahumma salli ala muhammad. Wa Ali Muhammad.